Hi, this is Brother Richard. And today we're studying lesson I term in time judgment part two. Last night we looked at the judgment that would take place at the second coming of the Lord. Today we're looking at the judgment that will take place at the end of the age called the Great White Throne Judgment. <clears throat> the scripture teaches <clears throat> the great white throne judgment is tied into the second resurrection, which is called the resurrection unto death, in which all unsaved will resurrect. Turn to Revelation, the 20th chapter, we want verses 5 to 12. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection ends at the second coming of the Lord. In the first resurrection, everybody <clears throat> that participates in this resurrection is participating in a position, in a life that will be lived in the kingdom. <clears throat> We see this illustrated in verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the first resurrection will determine the position of each individual that is a participant. The first resurrection starts, of course, with a rapture which is the high point in which the bride is taken from the earth and given the inheritance in the sun, which constitutes all things. And then we have other phases of the resurrection in which the 144,000 participate, the two witnesses participate at the end all the saints who have overcome the uh, evil forces of the earth will participate. So we find the scripture teaches after that. Excuse me. I just want to nail that down. Sure. You said that includes the saints who have overcome. These would then we would be, excuse me, the saints who were spotted. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yes. And the ones who didn't take the mark, and the ones who were beheaded, and the ones on the uh, sea of glass, all of these groups participate in that resurrection, the first resurrection to life. Right. It closes <coughs> with the Lord setting up the kingdom on earth, the beginning of the millennial period. The last group to participate in this resurrection are those that were beheaded. Okay which don't even make heaven. They're on earth when the Lord comes back. Yes? Okay, isn't there a resurrection unto death first before the resurrection unto life? No. Okay. Uh, according to the scripture well, here... the reason I'm asking that is because we know that the tares are bound up and cast in the lake before the... Um, They are judged first before the resurrection. That's part of the, the uh, judgment of the nations to come on all evil that's on the earth. But they don't have any part in the resurrection. They're judged and then taken out of the picture. But they're judged first, then the resurrection. Yes, but their judgment has nothing to do with their resurrection. It's a judgment on them. The resurrection that we're looking at deals with all those who are destined for a place in the kingdom, for a position. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> as verse 5 again says, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In other words, this is the end of the first resurrection. Now we drop down <clears throat> to verse 7, and we'll read down to verse 12. 
When a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. <clears throat> and I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Now, this group, verse 12, <clears throat> I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. This is the generation that lived on the earth at the time that the creation goes out of existence. Everything <coughs> is wiped out. Everything is killed in this destruction. So this becomes the first generation to experience judgment and to experience resurrection. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, this is the generation of those who were killed when the physical creation went out of existence. Turn to 2 Peter, 3rd chapter, verses 7 to 10. Second Peter, third chapter, verse seven to ten. Okay. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment, the perdition of ungodly men. So, in other words, he's talking about the current order, the physical creation, the earth that we're living on, the heavens that are overhead, all being held in reserve. At a specific point, the self-destructive mechanism that's put into it is going to engulf it and destroy it. And then he goes on. Well, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, his son may count slackness. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This happens at the end of the millennial period. When Satan is released, yes. Okay, so is Satan involved in that? Yes. Okay. That's what I was assuming because, see, when you said that it's going to go out of, go out of existence, it's a divine decision <coughs> of God. But by the means by which it comes about is what I was curious about, that Satan is going to be involved. Well, Satan is the instrument to which it will be set in motion. He doesn't have a clue as to what's happening. He's in the middle of a revolt against God, trying to get the human race on his side again. Turn back to Revelation, the 20th chapter. And you see what Peter is talking about. In verse 10, this happens in the day of the Lord, which suddenly the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the earth and the elements will melt. This is referred to in Revelation 20, Verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. 
and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. This is what Peter is talking about. The, 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 the self-destruct mechanism goes in instantaneously at the time that Satan <coughs> manipulates the human race into rebelling against God. They surround the camp of the saints, they surround Jerusalem with the intent of destroying it. But before anything happens, this whole creation goes out of existence. Then, you will know, verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night. Now it goes to talk about all the humans that lived on the earth. Verse 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. So this is talking exactly about what Peter is talking about. There's no longer a physical creation. Everybody has been wiped out. Their souls are suddenly... They find themselves in a place where there's this throne and in this region and they are in a state of utter confusion. Yes. Okay, this physical creation. We're talking our solar system? Everything. Okay. The universe. Yeah. The astral plane. Everything is gone. There's no Eretz anywhere. Eretz or Earth ceases to exist. Okay, the reason I'm asking is I know that we're going to be rulers and and then developers of the life forms that exist. Mm -hmm. um, if their habitations are destroyed, where are the life forms? <coughs> the essence, you'll note, in Revelation 20, they ruled and reigned for a thousand years. Over all the Luciferian life forms, this refers to the physical realm. Everything in the levels of the physical. The sons of God will rule for a thousand years. And also understand, everything in the physical realm is temporary. It's designed ultimately to go out of existence. The spiritual aspect of that intelligence will go on. But the physical part of them that dwelt on whatever plane or whatever habitation no longer exists. Okay, so literally, when we step into the, the eternal state, we're, we're ruling and administering spiritual. No, no physical. Well, you're, you're administering the physical from the spiritual. Okay, but if the physical has been destroyed, what it well, that, then it's entering into a different state, a different phase, a new era, a new age, with different components. But we're talking now about everything that exists from a physical perspective lasts up until this point. So that would be the new heavens and the new earth. After. Right. After this judgment. So you're transiting from one era into another. And as such, it's being determined who is going to transit into the eternal state and who is going to go into the the uh, uh, um, torment states of existence. Now, just to follow up behind the mark, which is the new heavens, new earth. New heavens, same host, different host. When you say the same host of different Dwellers host. that live there. Well, that's, <clears throat> it's being determined by the judgment. Okay. Now, Earth, more than just this one planet, or is there going to be many more planets? You'll have, I believe, the solar system. Okay. Earth, because you're going to have a sun and a moon okay. in a rep representation. But let's finish the, the, okay. the so you'll get a better idea of it as we go. So we're looking at this first generation. I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So what we find, this generation that was wiped out when the creation went out of existence is going to find itself before the great white throne standing in a judgment. Now, what's going to determine who gets judged and who doesn't has to do with two things. 
has to do with the rulership of the sons of God for a thousand years, and it has to do with the decision of the individual to join in the Luciferian revolt or remain loyal to Elohim and the sons of God. This is what the great white throne is going to determine. <clears throat> Take a look at some illustrations of this. Scripture teaches of this generation all who did not join in the rebellion of Satan will have their names written in the book of life and be saved on the new earth. The humans who did not join in the rebellion have their names written in the book of life. That's why it's opened at this time. And those who are found written in the book of life take up habitation on the new earth. Earth, which comes, it manifests in Revelation, the 21st chapter. Yes. Okay, so what I just now heard from you, unless I heard something, unless you said something completely different. Okay, there's an eternal book of life that names are written in there right now. Are there any names going to be added to that list? No. Because it sounded like you were saying that there were going to be names added into the book no, of life. No, no, no. That book is closed, so everything in it is already completed. We're looking here, it says the book is open now okay. to determine whose name is in it and whose name aren't, is not in it. Okay. The person whose name is in it, God took okay. an evaluation from eternity to determine who sided with him or who sided with Lucifer. Okay. Can I just, I'm sorry, can I just back up to sure. embrace this point? Sure. At this point, <clears throat> hang on a second. I'm going to try and nail this down. Right. At this point, where are all the saints who have been lifted up in the rapture? Where are they and what are they doing? Are they watching this taking part? <laughs> yes. They're at the throne with the Father who's doing the judging. So they're... Hang on. I should have said before the actual judgment happens. Mm -hmm. So just before the point when... The Lord says, okay, enough, it's judgment time. Just before that point, mm -hmm. um, you said everything goes out of existence. At that point, I understood there to be arrays of, or armies of Luciferians who've tricked humans into siding with them, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone who took part in the rapture or was raised up in the rapture is actually looking down on this and, and watching this yep. play out, yep. like, like a movie almost. Yeah, everybody knows exactly what's going to happen. All right. When... The um, worlds that Brace was talking about go out of existence, the physical worlds. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's in the spiritual world still obviously exists and is, again, just watching that like an event. Mm -hmm. So for the new earth and the new um, uh, heaven to happen, is that a new remake, is the word I'm using, the way that Jesus made the, 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 the first... The primary creation. Is that a new creation? No. no. So where, then where do the new worlds come from? I believe they already exist. Notice what it says in Revelation 21. After the last person is thrown in the lake of fire, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for well, the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. So it comes into the reality where the old earth and the old heavens were. God merely shifts it from one reality into another reality. Okay. It already existed. Right. <clears throat> Determination. This generation of humans, we're looking at the humans firstly. The, 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 the judgment is determining who is going to take up residence on the new earth. That's determined by the loyalty of that person during the Luciferian revolt. That's the test. Now we understand, uh, let me give you my take on something. During the millennial period, from a, as far as the humans are concerned, there will be no positions given out of rulership, either in the millennium, or in the eternal state to the humans that are born during the thousand year reign. 
their birth, their life is in a paradise. You don't have conditions that necessitate qualifying for a position. Because they're going to be ruled over by the sons of God. They're going to live out a, a, a glorious existence for a thousand years. And they're going to be tested at the end of the thousand years to see if they're worthy of going into the eternal state. Just like we are being tested to see if we're worthy enough to stand before the Lord to make the rapture. Everything takes place as a test in the physical. Yes. Okay, now during this millennium period, <coughs> obviously Satan has to be known about. Because when he comes out to deceive them, they have... Is this, is this a brand new exposure to them? They've never heard anything about this individual? There's, there's, it, it, so is it, he deceives them, and if it's your, your first shot at it, that's, do you understand what I'm saying? They have no, they have no knowledge of Satan. There's all of a sudden he appears, and he says, well, thus and so and this and that. Just is like the same thing with Eve. Exactly. No. Exactly. It's going to be a repeat of that. So there's no history. There's no, as uh, Bryce No, said. they're not going to know what it was like here. They're not going to know what sin was like. They're not going to know what, just as Eve didn't know what it would be like to fall. Mm -hmm. The human race is going to be oblivious to any of that. They've wow. lived a thousand years in the lap of luxury on a paradise region, <clears throat> having the best of life, <clears throat> being directed and guided by superior beings. At the end of that realm, at the end of that reign, Lucifer, whose influence has been bound for a thousand years, so they have never in encountered anything dealing with him, no knowledge of him whatsoever, is going to be released to test them. And of course he tests them by the way he always tests. You know, uh, he, will, he will point to the, to the saints and say, this is their world, this is our world, just like he's going to point to the, the coming uh, of the, the, the sons of God, to take over and set up the kingdom, is you're going to use the same argument and deceive probably the majority of that generation into, because it says they went up as the, on the breath of the earth like the sand of the sea in rebellion surrounding the new Jerusalem. So, no, they're not going to know anything about him, and whatever lie he tells them, they're going to believe it. Part of the test. So, in this See, the thing of it is, is, okay, now, Adam and Eve were told, in the day that thou eat, thou shalt surely die. So now there, there's a warning, okay, don't eat. So they, these these individuals have no warning? No. They don't they need just to, have a test. They don't need to be warned because they will have had the rule of the righteous Jesus Christ for a right. thousand years. Right. Along comes a guy telling them, what they need to do is in opposition to what they have been told. Yeah, they're time. in bondage. They're not being taught. They're not. They're not living life of luxury. They're not li living a blissful engine. No, you're being subjugated by this person, this individual. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a it's a distortion of what's actually said. But it's exactly. a, it's an opinion that's offered. Yeah, he's going to offer them in their mind something better. Oh, if we take over, we're going to have this. We're going to have that. We're going to okay. make this a beautiful. Sure. And, uh, you know, yeah, nothing changes in, in Satan's methodology. Right. Yeah. So that's a rerun, as you're saying, really, of um, the first book, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's extraordinary. Why should he change it? Look how successful he was. Mm. But, of course, this is going to be to his total undoing. He has no clue that this thing is going to go out of existence until it goes out of existence. Now... So what we find, the test, will be those whose names are in the book of life. They will enter into the new heavens and the new earth. Um, Revelation 20, verse 15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. So those who have been found worthy to take up habitation on the new earth are going to be ministered to by the Father. Understand, they went through cosmic uh, destruction. They stand before the throne. Their name is found in the book of life. And now they're going to be uh, basically rehabilitated on the new earth for a thousand, well, for eternity, actually. Now, turn to Revelation 21, verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. The kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. So these are the ones that are saved along with those of the previous generations, like this generation, who died having the saving faith but no rewards. The earth is going to be the habitation for all those that are just saved. Now, the sons of God, the scripture infers, infers of those who were ruled over the Luciferian nations, my belief is they will take up habitations in the heavens. And of course, those that were originally ruling over them will continue to rule over them for eternity but not in the sense of the way they ruled of them before with a, with a rod of iron. They won't need to because they will have conformed to, accepted, yielded to the Father and the Father's ways. And so they will be deemed worthy of going into the new order. Those who do not will find themselves in the torment regions, just like all the rest of the evil and the wicked. Yes. Okay, so now we know that the scripture says that the Father is going to spend the rest of eternity showering us, basically, my, 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 uh, with these <coughs> quote-unquote life experiences, or, um, yeah, life experiences. Actually, with his favor. Okay, so now, so we are ruling over these individuals, and we are giving them what the Father has given us in measured quantities, if you will. You're br we're bringing them up with life experiences mm -hmm. as we right. experience them. Exactly. Exactly. When you said, um, and God will minister to them, did you mean directly or through us, for example? No, it says the Father himself. It says mm -hmm. the tabernacle of God is with men. So he is going to do the same thing that Jesus did with us in this period. Father has never had anything to do with the physical creation. He's put all that in the hands of the Son. The eternal state, the Son turns authority back to the Father and the Father directly becomes involved in the right. creation. Yes. Okay, so now let's say you're an individual that you were born during the millennium or whatever and you want to be ministered to <coughs> by the Father. Okay. Now, the sons of God are over them? Yes. Now, why would they not? Is there? Are we going to have an involvement with them going to the Father? No. Why would they come to? Why wouldn't they come to us? Be ministered to instead of the Father? Because it's a different dispensation. It's in the eternal state. Number one, and number two. <clears throat> the sons of God have already got a mandate of rulership over the creation, over the inheritance, and they're going to be busy doing that. Each one, the scripture says, that when Peter asked them, what's in it for us? Jesus said, I, <clears throat> he say, I um, give unto you a kingdom, 
So each son is going to have a kingdom of his own to oversee in addition to all the rest of the inheritance, in addition to the time that he spends in the presence of the Father, having the Father's favor poured out on him. Yes. So now, a subject in my kingdom decides they want to be ministered to the, by the Father. What's, what is my part in that? Don't happen that way. Right. Now, hang on a second. I like what you're saying. I like this. Are you, I mean, are you saying the thought won't come to that person to say, well, you know, I like the look of God the Father. No. So that's why it won't happen that way. No. Conditions for something like that wouldn't exist. Uh, each soul that's given to you is attached to you. That's the Father's way of doing things. And so that each of that, that soul is going to look to you as the author and the finisher of their life and their experience. So why does it even occur to them to go to the Father instead of us? It doesn't. It's the Father's mandate. So the Father's going to them as the opposed to The Father's going to them. Okay. Yeah, minister to them. Okay. I get, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with your answer, but it's, I, it's not, I'm not solid on it yet. Yeah. As we read, we find... <laughs> the eternal state is going to be a radical change from everything that happened before it. In the eternal state, the Father, pur the Father purposes for the sons to enter into totally new uh, experiences on higher and higher and higher planes. Now, these poor folks here that on earth constitute the lowest level of existence. You want, the Father would not want you spending your experience on that lower level to begin with. Because you're, you're crafted for experiences at the highest level. It still will be a hierarchy. And you'll get an example of that. Turn to uh, Isaiah. 66 chapter. Is that in the same way that Wade, VH, wasn't able to bring himself down to such a low level in terms of dealing with uh, Lucifer? Is that a similar concept you're talking about? Yes. Right. Yes. Is there 66? Verses 22 to 24. These are those when they get themselves together and are ministered to by the Father. They're going to spend their life on the new earth. No way they're going to go behind that. The intermediary between them and the Father, as you were speaking, are going to be the kings of the earth. Okay, so now, I'm sorry to have to ask this question. Okay, okay so now we have humans, and we're over, but we're over much more than humans. There has, is there a higher level of satient being that is not angelic that we are going to be over? Now, okay, yeah, I'll just leave it right there. Many. Okay, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As a matter of fact, the humans probably won't even be in your um, life experiences. They're too far down the chain. In essence, I'm see. I'm imagining being ruling over the ants. You know. Okay. So that, that's a that's a very low from my perspective, but also at the same time, that's my perspective of an ant as being a low life form. There could be ant-like beings that exist that are far oh, more yeah. sentient than yeah. sure. humans. Sure, there are, from what their the UFO contactees are saying. But in this particular capacity, the Father has orchestrated a hierarchy level of, of uh, rulership. You as a son as a adopted son won't even 
see the earth. We're going to be involved in these people that are on the earth. It's not in the Father's plan. Remember, we talked about plurality of existence. And in that capacity, you're going to be living in such a way that earth is not going to be a part of the Father's designation for the higher signs. Your destiny is going to be in, at the minimum, dealing with beings that are on the level of probably the dawn stars that you'll be ruling over, showing them the things that you're being shown. Um, the capacity of the humans is going to be so, from the perspective of the sun, so greatly diminished that the Father has taken uh, that authority and given it to the old covenant saints. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that, that sort of, David, that sort of thing. That's earth. There's no longer anything to do with it. Matter of fact, it will get to a point where the last thing that will happen is that the sons of God, the bride, the prototoke is going to be asked to erase the memory of ever being human. So that's, that's something that's far and away left out. But let's take a look at <coughs> scripture here. Isaiah 66, verse 22 to 24. Now this deals with the humans resident on the new earth that are saved. Whereas the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. He's talking about all the humans that are on the earth. They're going to still have times and seasons. They have to present themselves in the presence of the Father. They shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For the worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So this is, this is an action that's taking place at the lowest rung of the glory chain. I don't have anything to do with that. It makes me realize how far the father brings us up, mm -hmm. because since we start as humans, and I guess we are to ants as gods are to us, mm -hmm. then it's, it's mind-boggling, the, 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 the difference. What the farm's going to do in one fell swoop, when the change takes place in the twinkling of an eye, you're going to go from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. The end point I was making is that that could only happen if you were born in a given 2,000 year period. Exactly. That's just wild. Exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. Exactly. It's interesting uh, that's what's said about it. Of men born of a woman, hmm. there are none greater than the John the Baptist. Now, it's, it's just so interesting him to know that he's not part, he, he can't go no farther. And it's must have been a torment, but at the same time, for his lack of better terminology, dispensation, he's the greatest. Yep. I'm yeah. wondering now, based on what you're saying, whether he had the comprehension, the wit, to actually grasp the difference in whether he could or couldn't be part of that group. What it actually, what would it actually mean to him? He would know better than the, than the disciples at that time. Because his ministry as the forerunner of the new covenant, hmm. John the Baptist preached the kingdom before Jesus did. So he had an understanding. He knew. The wow. Holy Spirit would give him comprehension of what he had to know in order to take his place as the transition figure that he was meant to be. So he knew. He spoke about the bride. He understood what the bride was. Hmm. More so than the disciples did. Okay, <clears throat> I, I, this is off, off the road, I was going to ask it. Did not John the Baptist baptize Jesus? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Because Jesus was representing man at 
at the time. And John the Baptist did it reluctantly. He said, I have need to be baptized of you. But Jesus said, suffer it to fulfill scripture. Okay. Yeah, well, see, I'm trying to understand the necessity for Christ to be baptized because he, he for us, when we get baptized, it's an outward de declaration that we are now changing our lives. We are, we're, we're going to go down a path seeking Jesus. And he does it, why? Because he is the prototokos. He has to do it. We have to do everything he did. He, okay. and he didn't start his open ministry until after he was baptized. Right. I didn't know that. So right. I remember reading that when John the Baptist was in the womb of Ma Martha? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Wow. Jesus' mother, Mary, visits Elizabeth and the baby kicks in the right, womb, right. I presume, from the joy that, you know, yeah. that's just incredible, yeah. Yeah. absolutely incredible. So imagine knowing how great this person is before you're even born. That's just wild. Spiritual. Doesn't that blow you away? <laughs> mind boggling. So David rules the new earth from the capital, the new Jerusalem. <coughs> what place does John the Baptist have? doesn't say, but I'm quite sure he'll have a high position. He's a prophet in the Old Covenant, so he will probably be a judge. That's a great question. But we need to understand something. That's a secondary application in the eternal state. The earth is actually a, um, in addition to facilitate those who couldn't make it to heaven. And also, of course, to fulfill the promises that YHVH made to Israel. But the main thrust will be in heaven. You say, well, it may be go from your mind, but the Father's here on earth ministering to these people. Mm -hmm. Turn to Revelation. Let me, let me say something real quick. Real, yeah. We're going to turn around. So, now, if God wanted... He could have been born during the Old Testament. Yes. He could have been born. Yes. No, but he decides that I'm going to incarnate during this this dispensation, right. and that's mind-boggling. That's exactly why. And not just that, but that you would incarnate at the time when you hear what he has to say. And what he has to say is coming from the Lord. The thing of it is, is him choosing me to be incarnate during this period. So maybe I'm going to do something. Dude, I think you're favored. <laughs> I, I think you're going to agree with that. I've only been telling you that for 30 years. <laughs> well, start telling these guys now. <laughs> Turn to Revelation, the 21st chapter. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we, want, we want verses... One to three. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now I want you to focus on one passage of Scripture. Verse 2. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God. From God. From God. What does that mean? He's in two places at once. Not only is he in two places at once, the city's in two places at once, and everybody else is in two places at once. So there are copies. Well, plurality I'm not of sure existence. That's right, but yes, okay. Wow. Hmm. Does that include John? I guess so, because he was seeing it, and he was also. Oh, you mean at John, the time? Yeah, John, John who was seeing this, seeing this happen. Well, where was his physical body at that time? On the Isle of Patmos, he's right. seen it spiritually. Actually, he's being shown this from the Revelation book. So what you're looking at is an action of duality, plurality of existence. 
main thrust of all activity is going to be the heavens and beyond. Do you believe that you, you personally, are in the position to understand, and when I say understand, I mean comprehend, experience, what it means to be pluralistic? Well, let's just say the Father will show you incrementally to give you an experience, isn't it? Because it's very, very, very heavy on the linear mind to experience plurality. Because the linear mind is programmed for linear existence, plus the corrupt in the corrupted state. For you to say that, one presumes, and forgive me if I'm outing you a little bit, but for you to say that, one presumes that you've had a number of experiences for you to actually grasp what you're saying. Well, let's just say we're designed to have experiences as we reach a certain level. Okay. I won't beat you up too much, right? <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about this plural life, being in two places, in, enjoying two different things, doing two different things at the same time. That's an incredible concept. That's going to take a lot of time to really, <laughs> to really grasp. You can be at several different levels doing several different things simultaneously. Mm. And being aware of it. Let's go on. Okay, we're looking at the uh, Great White Throne Judgment on the rest of the generations after this one. Scripture teaches not only will the souls and bodies of the unsaved be resurrected, but God will bring out of time their habitations. So what he's going to do in showing them the judgment that's going to come upon them <clears throat> is to literally bring back the situations that they were doing that were causing them to sin in the first place. Let's see some examples. Turn to Matthew 11, verse 21, verse 20 to Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe to thee, Chorazin, woe to thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you <clears throat> had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. Thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So all these cities are going to be brought back out of time, and their inhabitants judged by the things that they we're doing. Let's see some other examples of this. Turn to Matthew twenty three, <coughs> verse twenty nine to thirty six. <coughs> Okay. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, <clears throat> because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. <clears throat> And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. <coughs> Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. For ye have the measure of your fathers, your serpents, your generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill. And crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, <clears throat> that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So the generation in Jerusalem <clears throat> at the time that he's speaking to them is going to be brought back out of time and they're going to <clears throat> be indicted for the things that they have done. Back, that generation is going to have more of a judgment than any other that stands before the great white throne because they lived at the time that the Lord ministered and they purposely rejected him. And so all the acts are going to be brought back and they're going to be redone over again. And as a result, the judgment is going to <clears throat> manifest as these acts are perpetrated. They're going to be filled with greater and greater and greater torment. Finally, cast into the lake of fire. <coughs> Turn to Luke 11, verse 31 to 32. Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment, which she's going to resurrect with the men of this generation, and condemn them. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, the greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment, resurrect with this generation, and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, the greater than Jonas is here. So what's being said, God is going to bring out of time all the generations that existed and all the things that were done in them. Who's the Queen of the South? Queen of Sheba. <coughs> <coughs> Scripture teaches many will regret rejecting the Lord when they see the glory of the kingdom established on earth. Turn to Luke 13, verse 22 to 30. <clears throat> and he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, shall seek to enter in, and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up, and has shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. This is a picture of him bringing the city back out of time. And those that are 
being judged, seeing what's taking place, and seeing the glory of the kingdom of God and them being outside of it, because they're going to go into outer darkness. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So it's literally a, a, a case of, in our courts, you have to have that evidence to convict somebody. If somebody shoots someone and you have the gun, and you have the bullets, and the bullets match the wound that the person got shot, and the guy's fingerprints on the gun, you convict them. In this particular capacity, what the father is going to do is to bring the actual act back of the person that perpetrated it. And you're going to, he's going to experience the whole thing over and over. They're going to experience rejecting Christ. They're going to experience the hypocrisy of the Sanhedrin, whispering and all the stuff that they engineered doing. It's going to be wide open for everybody to see. <coughs> Conditions of torment are going to come on them as they experience these things. This is the same thing that happens with those that take the mark of the beast. Turn over to Revelation 14th chapter. Revelation 14, verses 9 to 11. <clears throat> the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So before they hit the lake of fire, the conditions of the lake of fire are going to come upon them. The holy angels are referring to the spirits or the uh, saints, right? Go to Tokyo's. <clears throat> Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment sendeth up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Now this is interesting, because what it's saying here on the earth, the conditions, the angel's going to pour out the vials of wrath. And these guys that took the mark are going to be hit with it. And the conditions of torment are going to come on them. And as the Lord and the saints take up residence on the earth, they're going to be in the midst of all this burning before they're cast off the earth into the lake of fire. So conditions of torment are going to come on people as part of the judgment. 